What's up ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? And welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I am Nick Smith, of course, and I just got done watching the movie San Andreas, which is a disaster movie that stars the most electrifying, pie-eating, hyperactive, I don't know what the rest of The Rock says, but if you can smell what The Rock is cooking, yeah. Rock the Dwayne Johnson uh, plays in this movie. He plays a rescuer that works for the fire department and this is like one of those old cliche uh, disaster movies that we got like in the 90s um, perfect example um, a lot of disaster movies Dante's Peak which actually that is my favorite Twister uh, The Day After Tomorrow which I've actually never watched but you, but you get the point this is a regular disaster movie that takes place, of course, in San Francisco. And this is dealing with about earthquakes. And Paul Giamatti, who played the rhino, I crush you, I kill you. He plays, uh, oh, I forget what they're called, but he's a scientist and like a, vo he's, he's like a volcanologist. He's a seismologist. That's what it is. And uh, he's basically with one of his friends, and they're basically doing a theory that they are able to... They're making this device where they can predict earthquakes, so that way they can give fair warning. So it's like... Uh, it's the plot from Twister where they're trying to learn more about tornadoes and where they can give fair warning about them. And... Uh, Rock the Dwayne Johnson is divorced uh, from his wife. Uh, his daughter, however, is played by the girl who played Heather in Texas Chainsaw. I'm just going to go ahead and give this actress applause because this movie is so much better than Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw is an abomination and I can't believe I even liked it. But good choice on this movie because you are so much better than that. This movie shows that you can act. This movie shows that you are a good actress. Make better choices. This one was okay. So him and his wife are divorced. And his wife is dating Mr. Fantastic. Like the guy who played Fan Mr. Fantastic in the uh, 2004 Fantastic Four movie. He plays this huge big boss of architects. And so, you know, like how they shown in the trailers that him and the, uh, her and the rock, uh, his daughter are going to meet up and, you know, he's going to take her to school and, um, stuff like that. So, but instead the, the boyfriend's like, well, you know, I'm flying up there anyway. I'll just t meet you there and then you can have her. And he's like, okay, whatever. So, and the, the rock is pissed because his ex-wife who's recently actually, well, I don't. They never say how long they've been divorced, but when he gets to the house, he gets divorce papers. So he's mad because they've moved in together, and he, and she didn't tell him. So you know he's really ticked off, and he gets a call about the earthquakes. Now, actually, the movie starts with actually the only scares in the movie and these scares were they were kind of typical but they did these jump scares but they weren't like horror movie jump scares for example the movie starts with this random girl who is driving on the road and um they do a scare they do these two scares where she's not looking and there's this big semi coming down the road and they do the scare like oh my gosh it's gonna hit her because she's texting and driving or she's doing something while she's driving and then they do the texting and driving thing and that one was actually that one actually did almost scare me because um because you know texting and driving this day and age it's really bad and so, you know, like the fact that like they played on that, I thought was actually an interesting idea. So, but it's not the texting and driving that actually gets her in an accident. Um, all of a sudden, these rent, like these small little earthquakes happen, and she goes flying off road, and she's stuck. And this is where we're introduced to the Rock and his character, and like you know how he's being interviewed about like how many rescues he's done, 
and all this. So, like, when the first earthquake happens, Paul Giamatti's character is like, okay, uh, they basically did all these, all this research and all this stuff, and they're basically like, okay, it's go basically long story short with all the science, without the science crap, the earthquakes are just going to get worse and worse throughout the whole movie. And the first earthquake that hit where Paul Giamatti's at is going through San Francisco. And they say that this earthquake is so bad that people on the eastern seaboard, I think that's what they said. It's something like that. Actually, no, I think that's what they said. The eastern seaboard is going to feel it. Paul Giamatti says that in, during the middle of the movie, they just got done doing uh, an earthquake just got finished. And they're like, how big was that? That's the largest earthquake report in history, uh, 9.6. So, with um, The Rock's daughter, uh, where she gets involved is she is waiting on Mr. Fantastic, who is going to talk to somebody, and it's where she comes across this character, Ben, and his little brother, Ollie. And these two have, an o have okay chemistry with each other. They do form a relationship, but it's not forced. It happens gradually. Um, because, like, where her dad is involved with, like, rescue and stuff like that, she knows a lot. So she's not a dumb character. She's a very smart character. And I liked that. I really did. And so, like, you know, like when all this stuff is happening, she's telling them, like, okay, we got to get to higher ground. we got to do this. Uh, there's a scene where they have to go to an electronics store because all the signal and the Wi-Fi was knocked out because of, you know, this earthquake. She says, okay, we got to go to an electronics store. we gotta find a, we got to find a phone line, and we got to call my dad. So she does, but the power gives out. And so during this, this sets the movie on its, on its quest where Rock and his wife have to go and find his daughter and save her before she dies. Now, when I was sitting there in the movie theater, I was like, okay, but if they would just explain to us why him and his wife got divorced, and they do... Um, Earlier on in the film, uh, they talk about how his wife, or how his, they had two daughters. They have Blake, who is played by the girl who played in Texas Chainsaw, and then they had this other daughter. Uh, I forget what the daughter's name was, but they talk about when they're, when The Rock and his wife are on the road, you know, they're talking because the helicopter gave out, the engine failure, uh, she taught, she starts... They bring up the subject of, did you know that our daughter keeps photos of me and you together or our trip to San Francisco in her memory box? And he's like, yeah. And then like she starts talking about, do you ever think what our lives would be like if she was still alive? And The Rock instantly changes. He shuts down. He's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't think about it. And the wife's like, I think about it all the time. Uh, and she tries to get him to open up. And this, I actually didn't mind. I mean, it's cliche, but it was, uh, it was, it was okay. You know, she's like, you know, this is why I didn't stick around. And so eventually they do get to talking, and we find out that he, he, she, the wife doesn't blame her husband for not being able to save her. But The Rock blames himself, and the wife left because he wouldn't open up to her. And I don't think it's I don't think it's just the you know I'm the father I'm supposed to protect my daughter and I couldn't save her. I think it has more along the lines to do with it's his job to save people, and the fact that that's what he does for a living. The fact that he couldn't save his own child, that's what really did something emotionally damaging to this character. And I thought that was very good. I was like, okay, so. It's not just the fact that a father couldn't save the child, but the fact that his job daily is saving people, and he couldn't save her like how he saves people. And I thought that was really good. Now, when the earthquakes first start, um, the daughter and Mr. Fantastic are in the same limo, and, you know, I was like, he's going to leave her, and at first he does it. He's like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get help. I'm going to go find a security guard, or I'm just going to go anywhere in the building, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to come get help, because she's stuck. Um, because a piece of concrete came and killed the limo driver, and her legs are pinned, so she can't get out. She's stuck. And he goes up and he finds a security guard, and he's like, there's someone downstairs, there's someone down uh, stuck in a limo. Where, where, where? Show me where. And then this random piece of concrete comes and smashes the guy, and then he just gets up and leaves. 
you know, he's, I only care about myself, I'm going to get out of here. And so the person that the daughter had hung out with for a little bit because he had an interview with said evil douchebag, um, you know, he's like, okay, we're going to go get her. So throughout this whole movie, he is trying to save her. And when he does, she steps in and she actually saves them. There's even a point where the earthquake gets so bad that like the street rises and like it separates. <clears throat> and um, the brother, or Ben, gets pieces of glass stuck in his leg. And just watching her pull this glass out made me cringe. Because she's like, okay, we got to get this piece of glass out of you. Because if you walk, it could damage your nerves. It could, it could really hurt. So when they have him propped up, and like when they're pulling the glass out, I was like, Gah! and she says, this is going to hurt. And he has that look like, no, 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 no. Ah. She's a good character, and so is the brother. Now, the little brother... Ollie, he's he's not annoying. He's a he's a pretty good side character. He um throughout this whole because they're from England. So throughout this whole movie, he has this book on San Francisco. It's got a map. It's got everything about San Francisco. So she's like, "Does your book have a map of San Francisco where we can find an electric store?" And it go and it does a close up of his face and he's like, "My book has everything." So and like during throughout this whole movie, like the rock's like, okay, you gotta get to higher ground and I'll be able to see you. And so that's what she's trying to do. She's like, we gotta get to higher ground. But <clears throat> eventually their plan uh, is destroyed and they have to go to plan B, which is now they have to go to the building that the daughter doesn't want to go to because it is made by the guy who left her behind. So now they're heading to this building and the wife and The Rock um, give away the, a truck that they stole because apparently earthquakes are a good place for people to start stealing stuff. And I actually didn't mind that. I mean, I'm sure that's what happens. I'm sure that whenever an uh, earthquake or something goes on, uh, criminals see an opportunity to steal anything and they, and they did it. So while this was going on, there was gunshots in the store that they were at. You know, Rock was looking for a car so they could go find their daughter. And he finds a truck that's full of plasma TVs. And they, they steal it. And the wife's like, this car's stolen. Yeah, we're going to steal it again. And so, like, they come across, like, this big open trench uh, the bo of the borderline of San Francisco. And this thing is massive. And even though this is just a regular natural disaster movie, the destruction in this movie made my jaw drop a couple times because like, I have never because I love natural disaster movies because um, things like this interest me volcanoes interest me tornadoes interest me natural disaster movies just interest me I don't know why but they do um, so like whenever the destruction is happening and you know it goes from like minor to humongous destruction I'm just like dang and so they, they find this plane, and <clears throat> there is this scene where they're basically going to run out of airspace. So the rock's like, we got to parachute out of here. They do, and they land in a baseball field. There was a couple jokes in this movie that made me laugh, but this was probably the funniest, at least to me. He, they land in the baseball field, and he's like, it's been a while since I've got you to second base. And I was like, ha, I get it. And then they focus, and they landed on second base. I was like, ha, 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 ha. <clears throat> but, one, but the most shocking moment in this movie for me was the tsunami, because this thing is huge. And The Rock and his wife, they, they get on this boat, and um, so, like, they're they're looking towards the building that the that the rock said that we were going to meet her at, and they notice that it's on fire. And so they see the water, and he's like, "Oh crap, we got to go. Water moving like this just means a means a tsunami." And like the the water starts building up, and the rock said, "We got to get over this before it crashes." And they're about to get up there, and then all of a sudden, this big ship comes up, and I was like. Dang, how are they going to get out of this? And, and they do.
But Mr. Fantastic dies. I was a little disappointed with this, but I'm going to tell you why. Because when they're on the phone with their daughter, she's like, uh, Mr. Fantastic left me. She left? He, 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 he left you? So then she... Dang. So then she calls him and she's like, you left her? You better be freaking dead, because if not, I'm going to freaking kill you myself. And I was like, please, can we see this happen? But he does get his comeuppance because he even screws a few people over when all the destruction is happening because he only cares about himself. And so he's on the Golden Gate Bridge. And when this big ship that The Rock and his wife have just avoided comes in, comes on the, um, comes in collision with the bridge, he looks at it and he's like, oh. And then just this big crate just comes and smashes him. I was happy. But at the same time, I was a little disappointed. Now, with all with the tsunami going on, they are they do get to the building that they needed to go to, and so water starts rising, and the daughter or Blake is stuck, and this was a pretty, it was an emotional scene, and it was actually kind of shocking, because. The Rock keeps going under, like going under to try to find a way to get his daughter safe. But she's like, you know, I, I love you, Dad, and I and I want you to tell Mom I love her too. And he's like, don't you give up on me? She passes out, and I was like, oh my gosh, if they were to kill off their other daughter, one that would suck, but two that would be something I have never seen before. And I'm not saying that I haven't seen <clears throat> loved ones die in a film. I have. It's just, in movies like this, like if there's, if there's someone who died in their life, in the character's life, and they only have one sibling or, or one loved one left, and usually that they think that the person dies, but they always find a way to bring the person back to life. And I was thinking, if she died, especially like this, that would be really damaging to the character. And I was like, this is something I would ne I would not be calling. It would be something I have never seen before. But he eventually does bring her back to life. And I was like, huh. And I even thought at one point that they killed her because The Rock is trying to... He's doing CPR, and he's trying to bring her back to life. And, and, and there's even a point like where he keeps doing it, and then he stops. And then the wife looks at him and just shakes her head like she's gone. And then The Rock starts doing it again, and I was like, if she died, I would be really sad. But she did come back to life. And her and Ben do become a couple, but it's after when they get in the top of the building. They ask Ollie to go find, uh, so they can change his bandage and some water. And he thanks her for everything that she's done, and he kisses her. And Ollie makes a, a little funny joke about, Mom is going to love her. And the whole audience got a good laugh out of it. And so the movie ends with The Rock thanking Ollie, or not Ollie, but Ben. He's like, we thank you for everything you've done for our daughter. And he's like, actually, sir, we should be thanking your daughter for everything she did for us. Because it wasn't that, we, it's not that they weren't there for her, but the fact that she was there for them more than they were for her because she knows what to do in these kind of situations. And so he was like, we should be thanking her. She was amazing she got us through this and your daughter is amazing and so the movie ends with a focus on the american flag Merk. yeah and the wife asks the rock well what do we do now we rebuild and so like they go through like before that the paul giamatti is on the news because he tells everyone and he's even being thanked uh because of the promotion that they put on the air about how they have figured out a way to predict when an earthquake is going to come. And so it was it was a really interesting idea, and the movie ended. This movie was okay. It wasn't too bad. You know, it's a simple popcorn movie. It's not, it's not something great or Oscar-worthy, but it's better than Texas Chainsaw. Seriously, choose better roles. This was a good one. And this was a much better movie than G.I. Joe uh, Retaliation. And if you're wondering why I say that, because the last movie that I seen where The Rock was the main star, 
And I'm not talking about the Fast and Furious films. This was much better. But guys, put in the comments below what you thought about this movie. I give this movie a C. Guys, have a good day.